Okay, welcome back for this new video. This time we're going to do problem num number nine, which basically relates an ideal gas for a polytropic process. I've shown you many times so far that I always try to follow this procedure in order to solve the problems. In most cases, I try to combine zero and one because they are similar. Sometimes you need, you need to uh, differentiate. Okay? So always read the problem statement, do figure sketch to understand, summarize what you need to find and calculate, then write down the main equations to solve. If you need additional equations, you go and find them so at the end, so that at the end you can solve in the last step. Okay? So let's look at this problem over here. We have carbon dioxide. So when I do these problems, what I do is always this. Okay, so this is the problem statement. So carbon dioxide, that will tell me what? CO2. is an ideal gas. So why is that important? Because if you know it's an ideal gas, we know we could use this relation over here. All right? Contained in a piston cylinder assembly. Every time I read the sentence piston cylinder assembly, I do this figure. And again, why is this important? It's because you know we have to deal with a closed system. Okay, for a constant mass of CO2. The system is initially at 6 bar and an initial temperature of 400 degree Kelvin. It undergoes an expansion process to a final temperature T2 of 298 Kelvin. And we know that when you go from this state 1 to this state 2, we have a polytropic relation PV to the K equal to a constant where K is equal to 1.2. Okay. We need to determine the final pressure. in bars and the final work and heat transfer each one in kilojoules per kilograms okay so now that I have done step zero and one which basically means to read the problem statement and understand it i can i don't need this page anymore okay so when you solve a problem everything should be within your solution Okay, so let's say this will be step zero one. Okay, so now we go to step two, which basically will be to write down our equations. So all right, let's start maybe by P2. So for P2, what we need to do is use the polytropic relations. You can probably go to the previous videos and find them, but in this problem, I'm just going to rederive it. So basically, as you can see, we know the pressure, we know the temperature, but we don't know the volumes. And what does that mean about the polytropic relations? Is that the first expression we have is that PV equal N R T. So you can write down P1, V1 equal to N R T1. P2, V2 equal to N R T2. So you see we don't know anything about the volume, so what we're going to try to do is to eliminate the uh, constant volumes. So what we do is you want, we can do P1 V1 divided by P2, V2 will be equal to what? N R T1 and R T2. So from here, this will cancel out. I end up with P1, V1, P2, 
P2P2, T1 over T2. Okay, but again, we try to isolate the V1, the V uh, variable. So we can write down V1 over V2 or V2 over V1, it doesn't matter. We be equal to T1 over T2 times P2 over P1. And let's say this will be our expression A. So next, we do the same thing now, but for the polytropic relation, we know PV to the K, so P1, V1 to the K, will be equal to P2, V2 to the K. And from this expression, we'll find out that V1 over V2 to the K should be equal to what? P2 over P1. In order to eliminate the K, we need to divide by K over here, so it will be K over K, so it becomes 1, and this will be P2 over P1, 1 over K. And this will be our expression B. So now we have two expressions for the same ratio, so we're going to equate A and B. And you see we can eliminate V1 over V2 and find a relation between the pressure and the temperatures. So equate A and B. And let's see what we have. We have T1 over T2, P2 over P1 equals to P2 over P1, 1 over K. So this will give us what? T1 over T2 equals to P2 over P1, 1 over K, times P1 over P2. So, that's what we can do, T1 over T2. So here you have the choice, probably the easiest thing here to do, uh, I don't know, we can do, really doesn't matter, P2 over P1, 1 over K, and this should be P2 over P1 to the minus 1. So this should give you what? T1 over T2 equals P2 over P1, 1 over K minus 1. Or at the end, T1 over T2 will be equal to P2 over P1 of 1 minus K divided by K. Alright, so if we look at our initial data, we know T1, we know T2, and we know P1. So we should be able to solve for uh, P2. So from above equation, we're going to get T1 over T2 equals to P2 over P1. So what do we need to do? In order to eliminate this, this term over here, we need to basically uh, divide by the same term. So that will mean here, say, K over 1 minus k. So at the end, we'll have it here that P2 will be equal to P1 times T1 
over T2 of K over 1 minus K. So if we do the numerical application, P2 should be equal to what? P1 is equal to, let's see if we can set P2, P1 equal to 6 bar. And then T1 is 400. Make sure this is in Kelvin. This is correct. 400 divided by 298 times 1.2 divided by 1 minus 1.2. And, okay, I'm going to stop the video a second so I can do a calculation and I will give you the result in a second. Okay, so if you do this calculation, you're actually going to get that P2 is equal to 1.02586 bar. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just say P2 will be equal to one point. 0.3 bar. Okay. So basically here I'm following the same procedure. Basically you see write down the equations, but I'm doing the numerical application right away because we probably need that information. Next thing we need to solve in this problem is the work. Okay, so this is something we have done as well in the previous videos. But again, let's do everything in detail again. So by definition, you know that the work done by the pressure is equal to the integral of PdV. In our case, we know the relation is PB to the K equal to a constant where k equals to 1.2. So from this relation, we know that p is equal to c over v to the k. All right? So substituting, we have the work would be equal to what? We substitute p by c over v to the k. times dv, so this gives the expression c integral of dv over v to the k. Okay, and like I told you, just you all know how to do the derivative of x dx will be what? x squared over 2. So what do you do? Okay, you add 1 over here and you divide by 2 basically. So what would be the integral for this one? This would be the same thing as rewriting C integral of V to the minus K dV. So this will give you what? C to the V of minus K plus 1. Okay, you do 1. 1 plus 1 over here, okay? And you divide by the 1 plus 1, which is 1 minus k. And we need to integrate this between what? v1 and v2. All right. So this gives us what? If I simplify, this says that the work equal to c 1 minus k times v2 of minus k plus 1 minus v1 of minus k plus 1. Okay, again, all this is not new. We know pv to the k equal to a constant. So that means that c can either be equal to p1 v1 to the k or c could be equal to p2 v2 to the k. So that's what we do over here. We 
we put this c inside but once you move to this to the first one we say c will be equal to p2 v2 to the k times v2 to the minus k plus 1 and for the second one c will be equal to p1 v1 to the k times v1 to the minus k plus 1 all right so at the end what do we have the work done by the pressure due to this polytropic process will be equal to p2 v2 minus p1 v1 Okay, let's call this our equation star. So let's see if we have everything. We know that K is equal to 1.2. We know P1 is equal to 6 bar. We know P2 1.03. But we don't know V1 or V2. But what can we do? Okay, maybe here in this case, the easiest thing to do will be to recognize that we have the expression pv equal and rt okay so we can rewrite the above equation as what 1 over 1 minus k and r t2 minus and r t1 okay or this would just be equal to n r 1 minus k t2 minus t1 okay Alright, so let's do the numerical application. So we know K is equal to 1.2. We know T2 is equal to 298 Kelvin T1 is equal to 400 degree Kelvin and okay so N is mass over molar mass all right so as on the previous problem we find the value for the molar mass uh, from the tables Okay, so if we go to the table, A to E of your textbook, you find that the, oh, here they don't give you the molar mass, they give you, okay, they give you R. So the R is for the carbon dioxide, 0 0.04. Five one three. Okay, this is fine because actually we know that R is equal to R bar over the molar mass. Okay, where R here is the universal gas constant. Okay, which value probably you can find from one of the other tables. Uh, let's see, yeah, that one is, which is the 8.314 kilojoules per kilomole. All right, so here we have a problem with the mass. But if you remember, they're asking us to find the work. Really, they're not asking you to find the work. They're asking you to find the work per unit mass. So work over M. So let's see. If we recall, so recalling the expression work equals 
equal to n r r 1 minus k t2 over t1. This is equal to what? And we say it's equal to mass over molar mass times r bar 1 over 1 minus k t2 minus t1. So if we move the n to the other side, it gives us work over mass will be equal to what? r bar over m which is r times 1 over 1 minus k t2 minus t1. So that is that the work per unit mass will be equal to what? r 1 minus k t2 over t1. Okay? So let me double check just one thing here. Uh, what was the value in table A to E? The units, so this are not the correct units, the 0 0.4513. We should use not table A to E, but table A2. And I will find out the correct value, but let me stop the video for a second. Okay, so I'm back. So for CO2, carbon dioxide, the K is actually equal to 1, 1.289. So this is 1.289 in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. All right, so if we do the recall substitution here, we're going to get that the work per unit mass will be equal to 1.289 kilojoules per kilogram, which is what we want. 1 minus 1.2 times 298 minus 400. So we do this calculation, we know we're going to get the units, the correct units of kilojoules per kilograms. And I will take my calculator now to do this calculation. And that is equal to... Okay guys, I look at the wrong column over here, sorry for that. But uh, that's what happens when you do the problems live. Here I look at the value of k in our province 1.2, you see it's close, but we're looking at the value of r. So r is carbon dioxide 0 0.1889. Okay, so I do the numerical calculation with that value. Okay, so you substitute the value over here, and this will give you a value of 96.1. You can probably not see it, 96.339, so let's say 96.34. All right. Okay, so let us check now what is left to solve. So we solve for P2, and now we need to find the heat transfer Q. All right. So in order to do that, we remember, oh, we recall what is the first principle of thermodynamics, so Q minus you each to the change in energy. In this problem, we can neglect the kinetic and potential energy. So basically, you have just equal to the internal energy. Since we know that CO2 is an ideal gas, that means that the state is always the same. So we can say that delta U is equal to M C V delta t so this will give us the q minus work equal to m cv 
and the delta t is equal to t2 minus t1. So that will give us what? Q over m minus work over m equals to Cv t2 minus t1, or finally that Q over m will be equal to the work per unit mass plus Cv t2 minus t1. Okay? So this part of the problem, we know work over m from the previous problem to be equal to 96.34. We know t2, we know t1, and we need to find cv. So that's the same thing from the table a2. So you go from table a2. Let's not do the mistake this time. For carbon dioxide, we know that CV will be equal to, so this is CP, CV is equal to 0 0.657. Is that correct? All right. So just do the numerical application. Q over M, be careful with the units, and this will be kilojoules, per kilogram Kelvin. So from the previous part we have this is 96.34 plus 0 0.657 times 298 minus 400. So units are correct. So let me do the calculation. Okay, and this will give you 29.33 kilojoules per kilogram. So this is the end of uh, this video. Thank you for your uh, time and considerations.